Okay, page 21. Toss out the unnecessary words. Right, so the idea is if your answer is repeating part of your question, you only have to repeat the first word. So if you are repeating an action, you only have to repeat the infinitive. So let's see, number one, the example, you can cross out everything after the two. Number two, why didn't you go to class this morning? I didn't want to and then cross out everything else. The word to tells you that it's going to be a verb. And because you're repeating, you don't have to repeat. Number three, did you call your mother? No, but I ought to. Number four, have you taken your vacation yet this year? No, I haven't, but I intend to. Questions? Okay, next part. Uh, so sometimes the word to means in order to. So if there is a mistake, we should fix it, but not every sentence has an error. David is in Mexico to visit, in order to visit. Remember, we are looking for infinitives, to plus a verb, the original form of the verb. If you use for, then the next word has to be a noun. And if your noun is visit, that is countable. We'll, we'll talk about this after the midterm, but you have to say for a visit. Number two, for a convention. This is correct. For plus a noun, convention is countable, so you say a convention. Three, for his cousin's wedding. This is also correct. Wedding is a noun. It's somebody's wedding. This is correct. Number four, to go sightseeing. This is also correct. Go is a verb, so you use to. Number five, for learn English. This is wrong. It should be to learn English. If it's a verb, use to, to learn, uh, sorry, Spanish, to learn Spanish. Some people may use for learning Spanish. The grammar is correct, but nobody says this because to learn Spanish means exactly the same thing and is shorter. To learn Spanish. Number six, to his health. This should be for because health is a noun. Number seven, for see the Maya ruins. This should be to because see is a verb. So to see the Mayan ruins. And number eight, for the cool mountain air. Air is a noun. For is correct. Questions? Yes. Number six, health is a noun. So this should be four. Good. Other questions? Okay. Uh, next part. Helen borrowed my dictionary. Look up is the verb. You want the infinitive, so to look up. There's no need for the for, so please delete the for. Number three, the teacher opened the window for letting some fresh air into the room. See, this is what I mean. The grammar is correct, but nobody says this. Instead, we say to let some fresh air into the room. Number four, I came to the school for learn English. We just saw this, to learn English. And number five, I traveled to Osaka 
for to visit my sister. You don't need the for. To is fine. Questions? Okay, next page. These are all about gerunds and infinitives. So number one, I don't mind to have a roommate. There's no way that you can uh, explain this to as in order to. I don't mind in order to have a roommate. Does not make sense without context. So this should not be an infinitive. This should be a gerund. I don't mind having a roommate. Now, I just said there's no way to make sense of this without context. It is possible. It is always possible to find some kind of context to make a silly grammar sentence make sense. In this case, uh, let's say that I have moved into a new place with a new roommate and I'm talking to my friend about all the annoying things my new roommate does. And my friend says, don't you mind? Don't you care? And I might reply, I don't mind to have a roommate. I want this roommate, therefore I don't mind. Right? I don't mind in order to have a roommate. But you see how, how detailed this context has to be for this sentence to make sense. The more common uh, meaning is simply having a roommate. Number two, most students want return home as soon as possible. This is want to, want to return home. Uh, so we're on page 22. Number three, learning about another country, it is very interesting. The subject of this sentence is learning about another country. So you don't need the it. Number four, I tried very hard to don't make any mistakes. Okay, so the main, or sorry, the infinitive verb in this sentence is to make. And you want to negate this. So how do you negate an infinitive? Add the not after the to. So very hard to not make any mistakes. You don't need to add the word to uh, do. Now, this is the correct answer, but many people will add the not in front of the to. Very often you will see I try very hard not to make any mistakes. Number five, the task of find a person who could tutor me in English wasn't difficult. Okay, so after of, you need a noun. Find is a verb, so this is wrong. It should be finding. The noun after of is finding a person who could tutor me in English is one noun. This entire action is the object of the word of. Uh, we're going to talk about this in like week 17, but this of is an, a positive of. It's like an equal sign. The thing on the left is the same thing as the thing on the right. So it's a task. What is the task? This is the task. Six. All of us needed to went to the ticket office before the game yesterday. OK, so this is in the past, but you only need one verb to show that it's in the past. So this should be to go to. Number seven, I'm looking forward to go to swimming in the ocean. To look forward to is not an infinitive. To look forward to is a phrasal verb. 
它是片语动词。To look forward to just means you expect or you anticipate. So even though it looks like infinitive, but it's actually not. After this too, please add a noun. You are expecting something. So to look forward to going to swimming in the ocean. Sorry, going to swim. The second one is an infinitive. I'll say, oh, looking forward to going to swim in the ocean. Or you could just say, I'm looking forward to swimming in the ocean. Why is there the word go? Eight, ski in the Alps. It was a big thrill for me. So the subject of this sentence is this action, ski in the Alps, ski, uh, Alps, so you don't need the it. But this also is not correct. To be a subject, it has to be a noun. Ski is a verb in this case. We need to change it to a noun. So this should be skiing. Two eyes, skiing. Yeah, English is a weird language. Number nine, don't keep to be asking me the same questions over and over. Okay, you know, you should know we keep doing something. So don't keep asking me. Number 10, during a fire drill, everyone is required leaving the building. This should be required to leave the building. Required to leave the building. 11, I don't enjoy to play card games. I prefer to spend my time for read or watch movies. Okay, so enjoy takes an object. You enjoy something. So it should be enjoy playing card games. Spend your time, again, doing something. So spend my time reading or watching movies. Twelve is hard for me understand people who speak very fast. Okay, so this takes a bit of work. The idea is there, right? When people speak very fast, you have a hard time understanding, or I guess I have a hard time understanding. So this sentence should be, the subject should be, to understand people who speak very fast is the subject. We use to and not understanding because this is about a kind of anxiety or fear. This person is hoping that nobody will talk too fast. So it's a kind of expectation. It's a negative expectation, but it's still an expectation. So we use to. To understand people who speak very fast is hard for me. And because the subject is very long, we put it at the end of the sentence and we add a null subject at the beginning. So the correct answer is, it is hard for me to understand people who speak very fast. Thirteen, when I entered the room, I found my young son stand on the kitchen table. So just like spend, just like see, find, 
you add a gerund. You found my young son standing on the kitchen table. Fourteen. When I got home, Irene was lying in bed. Think about what a wonderful time she'd had. Same principle, lying in bed, doing something. Gerund, thinking about. Questions about this page? All right, next page. Here we are, hang on. I think this is uh, today, today's. Uh, yeah, OK, so that's it. So page 23 is for today. Questions about the homework? OK, so today we're going to talk about three irregular verbs. Let's let's put it this way. Have and let. Okay, so B, we have seen the word B before, but let's look in more detail. B originally can be an intransitive verb, uh, so in this sense, to be is to exist. So, uh, for example, the famous line in Hamlet, You guys probably recognize this line, right? To be or not to be, that is the question. The word be means exist. So Hamlet here is thinking about whether he should kill himself. Uh, if you don't know the story of Hamlet, Hamlet is a prince. His father died. His father, the king, died. So his mother, the queen, married his uncle. And Hamlet discovers that his father died because his uncle killed him. And so Hamlet is thinking, should I avenge my father? But that means killing my uncle and destroying my mother's new marriage. What should I do? And he knows that if he does take revenge, uh, the, he will probably be sentenced to death for murder. So he's thinking, if I do take revenge, it's like I'm killing myself, but if I don't take revenge, I live, but I suffer mentally. So he's asking, should I do something that would lead to my death? Should I kill myself to be or not to be? And this is also why humans are called human beings. We exist. Uh, the word human is related to the earth, the ground, the soil. Uh, this is actually a Christian idea. Uh, Adam was created by God from the dust of the earth, and so we are human. We belong to the earth. Um, but we're looking at the word being, right? We exist. We are things that exist. But the more common use of the word be is as a copula. This is the grammar term, but a copula is basically an equal sign, right? Whatever is on the left is the same as whatever is on the right. So like I am a teacher, right? Before the am is I, after the am is teacher, it's the same thing. But the thing on the right does not have to be a noun. Red is an adjective. Uh, and in this way, the word be is a static, jing tai de, a static way of describing things, of presenting relationships, of presenting attributes. So when your main sentence uses the word be as its main verb, like this, nothing is changing. You are only describing. Uh, and then, of course, we have the word be as an auxiliary verb. We've been talking about this, right? 
I am talking. Uh, so as an auxiliary verb, it tells us the tense. This is present tense, but it does not tell us the action and it only tells us half of the aspect. You need B plus ing to form the progressive. So as an auxiliary, it tells us the tense or the time of the sentence. So if you do have one of these more complicated sentences and you're missing a main verb, if you only have this part, you can't tell is it in the past or present or future. In this case, you have to add a word such as be or have. Uh, in order to tell us what the time is. OK, questions about B? I don't have to tell you all the different kinds of B, right? B, is, am, are, were. Is that it? Was, will be. Yeah, OK, so yeah, you know these words. OK, the next one, do. Do is a great word. I love the word do. The original meaning of do is as a pure verb. It means an action. It doesn't tell you what action. It just tells you there is an action happening. So for example, what will you do? What action will you take? In this question, there is no idea about any specific kind of action. You're only asking about any action. Or you might have seen some a sentence like this. I do what I must. If I have to do it, I will do it. But what is it? What is the action? We don't know. The word do does not say. The second use of the word do is again as an auxiliary, and we have seen this before. When we form questions, right? Uh, when did you get home? The original of this sentence is I got home. At some time, we don't know, right? That's what the question is asking. But see, in the original sentence, you have one word. But in order to form a question, you need to be able to move something to the front uh, to put after the question word. So if you don't have anything here, you have to add the word do. And the original sentence is in the past tense. And we know that in English, it is the first verb that tells you the tense. So do becomes past tense did. And got becomes its original form get. We've seen this before. It's not too hard. Do you like grammar? Same thing, right? The original sentence is I maybe, maybe not like grammar. Uh, in order to form the question, you need to move a verb to the front, but you only have one verb, so you need to add a new verb, which is do. This is the present tense, so you use the present tense do. Do you like grammar? That's how you form the question. The third way of using do. Now, this is very, very fun. Um, when you are maybe like replying to somebody and uh, everybody knows the action that you're talking about. You don't have to repeat the action. We just saw in today's homework, if the infinitive is repeated, you can just not write out the repeated part. But sometimes you need a word to, to show people that you are talking about that action even if you don't want to repeat that action. For example, 
uh, I, I thought of a good example, but then, then I realized it's an exception to the rule. I need a better example. OK, um, let's see. Uh, no, that's also not a good one. OK. Um, all right, so this is the example that I thought of. It's not a very good example because you'll see the form doesn't really match. In this phrase, do is supposed to represent Mary uh, and its object, me. Of course, you'll immediately see that the most grammatical answer should be I will. But in popular culture, the common acceptance answer is I do. This uh, it's easier to come up with examples if we add another word. Um, so, for example. Uh, The word do used in this way often goes with the word so. Do so just means hand in your homework. Do is a verb and it replaces hand in. And so here is a noun and it replaces your homework. So do so is hand in your homework. This is how you can avoid repeating parts of your sentence. Or for example, if I ask you, have you handed in your homework and you want to give a positive answer, what would you say? If your answer is one word, it should be yes. All right, very simple. If your answer is two words, OK, let me write that down. So one word is yes. If your answer is two words, it should be. I have. Have you? I have. If your answer is four words, I have. I have done so. Right, so again, do means hand in, so means your homework. So this is a way of avoiding repeating yourself. Or repeating uh, redundant information. According to this logic, if you're reading something in English and the main verb is do. And you know there's supposed to be some kind of action, then it's probably the same action that was just mentioned earlier. OK, questions about do? Uh, OK, the word do has many more meanings that we will probably not use in a classroom context. For example, one uh, meaning of the word do as a verb is to have sex with. Uh, so. Uh, like as a joke, right, as a as a dirty joke, if uh, I asked a good buddy friend of mine, uh, what will you do? And he's feeling very annoyed. He might say, what will I do? I would do your mother. What will I do? Uh, but we're not going to use that in class. OK. And then the next three words we are going to look at together because they are all translated into the same word in Chinese, which is Rang or shi or ling. So, for example, um, she made her son clean up his room. In Chinese, we would translate made as like rang, right? Was a ling. 
But in English, this word has three different options. Make, have, and let. I'm going to talk about make and let. Uh, these are two. Um, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so make is when the person, sorry, the person does not want to do the thing. The sentence structure is always the same. Subject, make, have, let, person, do something in the original form. Actually, yeah, some, somebody once asked me for like a formula, right? So subject plus make, have, let, plus object, which is a person, plus uh, verb in the original form, and then the rest of the sentence. So in Chinese, uh, sorry, in English, we call these, um, I can't remember what we call them in English, but in Chinese, we call them zi They are the words you use when one person gets another person to do something. But the difference is, does the other person want to do it? If the other person does not want to do it, use make. If the other person does want to do it, use let. Same formula, right? The subject is a yeah, I should say the subject is a person. Make, let, have. The object is another person. And then an action in the original form and then the rest of the sentence. So if the object does not want to do it, use make. If the object does want to do it, use let. Uh, let is let, let, let. It's the same in the present tense and in the past tense and in the past participle. It's all the same. It's like put, right? Put, put, put. Same. It's always the same. And then we have the word have. Use the word have when you don't know or don't care whether the object wants to do it. If that information is not important, use have. So in this middle example, do I want to open the window? I don't care. But since he asked me, I'm just going to go do it. Does he care if I want to open the window? No. And whoever is reading this, or I guess whoever is writing this sentence, does the writer care whether I want to open the window? Also, no, it is not important. So for the same sentence in Chinese, you have three options. If the object does not want to do it, use make. If the object does want to do it, use let. And if the, you don't care if the object wants to do it or not, use have. You can think about it like this. Make is like force, let is like allow. Questions? These three words, okay, make can be in the passive voice. I mean, I guess let and have can also be in the passive voice. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, let me show you the passive of make first. So she made her son clean up the room. We begin with the object, her son. Then we begin, uh, then we give the verb made. So this is was made. And then you have to add two.
this is very important for this kind of verb in the passive voice. You have to add to. Now I say the other two don't make sense in the passive voice. Look at this sentence. The original sentence is she made her son do something. You have a very clear picture. This mother is forcing her like naughty son to go clean up his messy room. The picture is very clear. When we flip this, her son was made to, you also get a clear picture. A boy who doesn't want to clean up his room is very angrily and reluctantly picking up things from the floor of his room one at a time, very, very slowly. The picture is very clear. But what about this one, let? This means we want to go home early. And the only thing stopping us is the teacher. The teacher is essential to this sentence. If we take away the teacher, there is nothing stopping us from going home early. So it does not make sense to use the passive voice and remove this subject, right? The mother is gone. But if you take away the teacher, it doesn't make sense. Same thing for had. If nobody orders me to open the window, I would not get up and open the window. It does not make sense to remove the subject. So you only have to remember made in the passive voice. Questions? Okay, let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll do some practice questions. Actually, let's make good use of the break time. Please do page 23.
Okay, let's take a look at page 23. Number two. Liu Yutong. I asked my roommate to let me to use his shoe polish. What's wrong with this? Uh, so let is one of those three verbs. Um, so it's um, subject, let, object, verb so you don't need this to right let me use is correct okay good oh i i remembered what it's called in english yeah so these are called causative verbs right in chinese so you don't see they cause or somebody causes somebody else to do something Uh, okay, number three. I heard a car door to open and closing. Uh, good. Opening and closing. So this is infinitives versus gerunds. This is from last week. Uh, to hear something. Right, so it's a gerund, opening and closing. Number four, I had my friend to lend me his car. Zhang Ziying. Zhang Ziying zai ma. Good, I had my friend lend me his car, no two. Five, you should visit my country. It is too beautiful. Uh, Cai Wangjing. Okay, you're you're correct. This two is uh should be changed. Usually we would say it is very beautiful or it is so beautiful. The word two is trying to emphasize, but that's not how we use it. Two is negative in this way. It is too beautiful means you can't take it. It's so beautiful. So it's a negative word. Like it's very spicy. This food is very spicy. Could be positive, could be negative. But if you say this food is too spicy, it is always negative. Six, I went to the college bookstore for getting my books for the new term. Uh, uh, Number six, please. To, to get, good. I went to the college bookstore to get my books for the new term. In order to get. Um, if you want to use for, try to find a concrete noun after that. So you can say, I went to the college bookstore for my books. You don't need the verb getting. Uh, but if you do want to use the verb, it should be to get. Seven, one of our fights ended up with me having to send to the hospital for getting stitches. There is it. There is it, Yes, number seven.
Okay, so you're right. This part is not correct. But what is it saying? I go to the hospital, and it uses the word send. So the subject and the object are flipped, right? So this should be passive. Having to be sent. Uh, the active is having to send, send in the original form. But in passive, the first verb is be. So you have to add be in the original form. And there's another mistake. Good. Two. Good to get stitches in order to get stitches to get stitches. Good. Number eight. Lily deserves to be tell the truth about what happened last night. Zhen Is it active or passive? Who's telling who? Lily deserves to tell the truth. Does that make sense? So it should be passive, right? Okay. To be told the truth. In the original, it is two. Uh, in the active voice, it is two plus original. In the passive voice, you need to add the be verb. So it is two plus B in the original and then the main verb. Okay. Okay. About what happened last night. Good. Number nine. Barbara always makes me laughing. She has a great sense of humor. Number nine, please. Makes me laugh. Good. Subject is a person. Verb is make. Object is a person. So the next action should be in the original form. Makes me do something here. Makes me laugh. Good. Number 10. Stop telling me what to do. Let me to make up my own mind. So I tongue. Is she? Okay, so yes, this two is extra. Let me make up. My own mind is fine. Own is redundant, but it's emphasis. You're emphasizing, let me do it myself. So the only real mistake is the two. Let me make up my own mind. Good. Number 11. I went to the pharmacy for having my prescription to be filled. Hanjing Wei. Okay, you're right that the problem is here, but here it's supposed to be telling you the reason 
I went to the pharmacy, right? So uh, if it's a verb, we don't use have. Instead, we use. Sorry, if it's a verb, we don't use for. Instead, we use. To, to have. I went to the pharmacy in order to have. And there's another mistake. My prescription. Be filled. Good. Have is one of those causative verbs, right? Have something and then original form action. Have my prescription be filled. 12. You shouldn't let children playing with matches. Good. Play in the original form. Let object original form play with matches. Good. 13. When Shelly needed a passport photo, she had her picture taken by a professional photographer. Go on in, son. Should this taking be active or passive? Good. Had her picture be taken, or we can omit the be. You can simply say had her picture taken is also fine. So this question is kind of sneaky because these two words sound very similar. It should be taken, not taking. 14. I've finally assembled enough information for beginning writing my research paper. Pay. Are you here? Yes. 14, please. Is for beginning, correct? For beginning, is this right? This is a verb. So if you want to tell us the reason, instead of using for, we should use to. Right? So this should be to. Should be to begin, right? Two plus the original form to begin. Okay. Okay. And uh, oh, there's more. Okay, number 15. Omar is at the park right now. He is sit on a park bench, watch the ducks swimming in the pond. The sad expression on his face makes me to feel sorry for him. That's a lot. Uh, sounds a ching. No. Uh hmm. Shrije. Shrije. No. Hmm. Poison. Poison. Yes. Number fifteen, please. Sorry, I should call on somebody else because I really can't hear you. Um, let's do this one together. Omar is at the park right now. This is correct. He is sit on a park bench. This is wrong. 
you can say he is sitting. He's currently doing this action. He is sitting on a park bench. If you are British, you can say uh, he is sat on a park bench. The idea is he put himself on the bench. So in the passive voice, he put himself, he is put there. He is sat. Um, but this is British. So, you know, if you see this in the wild, you know what it means, but you don't need to be able to write it. He is sitting on a park bench watching the ducks swimming in the pond. The sad expression on his face makes me feel, makes me feel sorry for him. Ethan, I think that's what you said, right? Make me feel. Yeah, okay, good. And number 16, the music director tapped his baton for beginning the rehearsal. Huan Xinru. Yes. Good, to begin the rehearsal, in order to begin. Baton, zihui bang. It's the little stick that a conductor uses. Okay, questions about this page? Okay, next page. Wow, another 16 exciting questions. Um, I'll give you, these are, these are a bit harder, right? So I'll give you 15 minutes. Oh, that, that's not right. I'll give you 20 minutes. I feel free to discuss with your classmates.
Wow, you guys are fast. So let's take a look at the answers together. Number one, you shouldn't let children play with matches. Right? Let play. Number two, Bobby was lying in bed crying. Number three, you can get there more quickly by taking River Road instead of the interstate highway. Four, Isabel expected to be admitted to the university, but she wasn't. The word here is was because the main verb of her expectation is be. Right? Was replaces be. Five, our lawyer advised us not to sign or to not sign the contract until she had a chance to study very carefully. Number six, John was responsible for notifying. This is a trick question. To be responsible for something. Responsible for notifying everyone about the meeting. Seven, apparently he failed to call several people. Eight, I couldn't understand what the passage said, so I asked my friend to translate it for me. Nine, you can find out the meaning of the word by looking it up in a dictionary. 10. No, that's not what I meant to say. How can I make you understand? 11. Serena wore a large hat to protect her face from the sun. 12. We like to go fishing on weekends. 13. Maybe you can get Charlie to take you to the airport. 14. My doctor advised me not to eat or to not eat food with a high fat content. 15. Doctors always advise eating less and exercising more. Now, some of you might think, shouldn't this be to advise you to do something, right? But here it is not talking to a specific person. It is always. So this is a static general description. There is no expectation here. 16. Alan smelled something burning. When he ran into the kitchen, he saw fire coming out of the oven. <laughs> okay, questions about this page? Okay, next week we're going to talk about the subjunctive, which is probably the hardest unit before the midterm. Um, so be prepared, I guess. Okay, see you next week.